unbelievable. Before we get into today's video, I did wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know. <laughs> Y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. Hope you all have ha been having a great week so far. It's been a doozy, you guys. It has been a doozy. Before we go any further in today's video though, I did want to tell y'all, I have not told y'all this in a while, that I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. Over there, we just do things more casually. It's all kinds of different stuff. Reviews, cooking, whatever, whatever I got going on. Car rides, chats, rants, whatever. That's always linked down in the description box. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon's for 18 and up. On my Patreon, I do like different kind of story times. We go live over there. It is a good time if you're 18 and up and you'd like to join. And I also have an Instagram and all of those are always linked down in the description box if you would like to come and check me out. Yay. Okay. So we are back at it again to talk about Josh again. I wanted to say Josh's, mm, I wanted to say a few other things, but I'm going to try to keep it professional, which we all know I am not. If you're new here, hi, my name is Christina. This is, I'm not professional by no means, but so an old friend of Josh, his name is Justin, has spoken out recently and he is spilling the beans, you guys. He's spilling his whole entire personal experience. By the way, this whole video is alleged because I don't know, I was not there, but I'm gonna give you guys some good juicy information and some frustrating stuff today. So the guy, Justin and his wife actually created a podcast. Now the podcast is named, I pray you put this journal away. It is on Apple podcast as well as on YouTube. I will leave the YouTube link to his channel linked down below. He now has five episodes. I have listened to three, the first three of them. And in the, those episodes, he reads his journal when he went to church with Josh and was friends with Josh and the whole entire Duggar family. Justin said that he grew up fundamental Christian with his parents and that his parents were looking for a new church to go to and they knew about the Duggar family and that church and they were super conservative, I guess. I don't know what you would call the way that the Duggars approach Christianity behind the cameras, okay? We know how they approach it in front of the cameras, but behind the cameras, it's, it's different. So anywho, when Justin was a young, young boy, his parents decided to join this church and that is where he became friends with the whole entire Duggar family. He actually even talks about in his podcast that he had a crush on one of the sisters. I mean, he had like a big crush on her. I think he said it was like going on for like three or four months and he would build himself up to talk to her and like in his head, you know, he's going to say these things to her. And then once she would come around, he would like freeze up. We've all been there, right? When we were like in middle school and stuff, we have a little crush. I'm like, okay. I'm gonna say this when I see him. Ooh, and we're gonna laugh like this. <laughs> and then once you see him, you're like, yeah, been there. Anyways, so Justin in this podcast, and he's speaking to him and his wife, and the format, the way that they're doing these podcasts is just like a husband and wife talking. It's very much just laid back. He's reading out of his journal that he had during that time and talking about his experiences. And he talks about when the church found out that Josh, who was about 14 at this time, he was a teenager, had a prano addiction. Now, According to Justin, Josh and his family, the Duggars, Michelle and Jim Bob, told the church that he had a prano addiction, but later Justin found out as things come out that around that time is actually when the family found out that Josh had done that to his four sisters and the other little girl. We're going to get to that, you guys. Ugh. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Watch the other videos if you don't know. Whatever. Josh had touched these five little girls that we know of could be more. Okay. 
touch these five little girls at nighttime or when they were sleeping or whatever happened, and he was an older teenage boy. So when the parents found out, they decided they were going to take it to the church. He was going to confess to the, you know, looking at images or looking at things he wasn't supposed to, but not tell the whole church the whole truth about what had happened. So they put Josh up in front of the church and he's a teenage boy and he has to confess, oh, and the whole church is looking at him like the devil got you. You have such a calling on your life, Josh. You're going to do wonderful things and the devil is trying to take you out. And oh my goodness, I've, I've fallen weak to the devil's plan, right? It's all the devil, 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 devil. Well, in order to rehabilitate Josh, they send him to another man's house where he was like doing some renovations and like digging in this pond and um, he had to dig ditches all day. So we're going to send him out to this pond. He's not going to contact any of the family. It's going to be strict cut off. Nobody talks to him. They shaved Josh's head as a form of punishment. And this is a picture of him right here with his head shaved because they were still filming this during this time. And so he was digging these ditches. Now, the guy Justin says in his podcast that when TLC would come to film the show, he said they would come for like a week or two at a time and they film everything at one time. So the Duggars went from living their like, normal Christian routine that was their normal Christian routine and doing everything that they were doing. But then when TLC would come in to film the show with the family, they would pack, you know, a couple weeks full of like events. Okay. Y'all need to go bowling on this day. You need to cook breakfast on this day. You need to be working in the yard on this day. They would pack it full that way they could record it all at once. And Justin said it was kind of awkward and I know exactly what this is like that TLC would come in and they would say, nobody look at the camera. Okay. A little boy, I need you to carry this wood from here to here. Okay, you little girls, y'all need to sit over here and laugh so we can get you on camera. And he said, but then once the cameras were gone, it was just back to business as usual. Well, when the cameras for TLC came to film, they had Josh come back and be in the family. That way TLC or the public would not know what was going on behind the scenes. You know, the public people that were dedicated to watching the counting on shows would be like, okay, where is Josh at? So they had him come back. And that's how we got the picture of him with the shaved head because he had come back for that. And they said that during the show filming that they allowed Josh to interact like a normal kid because they didn't want the public to know. Now, Justin, the guy doing these podcasts, Seems the way that he's saying it, he seems to think that TLC may have, well, it seems to me that he thinks that TLC may have known kind of what was going on, but nevertheless, those things will never know. And TLC will probably, if they were in on that, they, they'll, they will never admit it because that would be, a, that would be horrible for their brand. I don't think that they would ever admit it. They would never admit, oh yeah, we knew that he had did this and da, 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 da. And then again, Jim, Bob and Michelle may not have even told TLC if they were keeping it from the church too. Some other really weird things that Justin said was that I guess at some point Josh was working on a campaign with somebody else that was in the church, another man that was in the church that was running for political office. And so when it came out that Josh was looking at inappropriate images and stuff, and the man that was running for political office lost, they kind of blamed it on Josh and was like, well, you were part of the campaign and you have brought this sin into the campaign and that's why he lost. And they kind of humiliated Josh in front of the church because of that. And it just, you know, it makes you think about like what that does. And I'm not Listen, he's a grown man now. He makes, Josh Duggar makes his own decisions. Absolutely no excuse for it. I ain't taking up for him. But looking at this child, when he was a child, it really makes you wonder what those types of things would have done to his mental health at the time. Nevertheless, let's keep going. The guy Justin talked about how weird it was because when Josh would come back from the guy's house digging holes and digging ditches and stuff and digging up sludge and they had like this analogy to where like every time you dig Josh and you pull the sludge up out of this pond, you're getting rid of that sin. You're digging it out of your life. And they just kind of like talk to him like that while he was working with his shaved head and, and being at this man's house. But when he would come back to go to church and join the family, he wasn't allowed to talk to the kids or talk to anybody because he was being punished. 
However, Justin said he would see him talking to the adults and stuff and he would be just smiling and Josh would be like happy and in great spirits. And he just thought how strange it was because at this time, Justin was a kid as well. And he's watching Josh like come back from this punishment all happy and smiling and lively. But then he would see the Duggar girls over there hugging each other and crying and like just so upset. And he just kind of didn't understand. Every time he came back to the house, they're there. There's no sense of like this is they're being triggered by all this Josh talk. There's no sense of like whatever. I mean, I saw girls hugging girls and like, you know, like squeezing them a little tighter as stuff is going on. I saw like kind of this like support group going on. Mm -hmm. but I think in my head I was just like girls are emotional. Yeah. But looking back on it, it really strikes me how emotional they were during mm -hmm. this time. Like they were a wreck. And, but Josh was not. He came back. Literally all the men wanted to talk to him. Uh, like, he was just like, hey, man. Like, he could just make a conversation with all the all the patriarchs, all the men of the church. Okay, there. so you're saying they wanted to talk to him like like everything was normal, basically. Yeah, it was okay. all normal discourse. Like, you know, go get food from the buffet and, like, Josh holding, their, holding his plate of Frito-Lays or whatever. And, you know, acting like normal. And I think the rule was that as long as the cameras were around, Josh could kind of talk and interact with people like normal. So he took that opportunity to like be really normal. Mm -hmm. And then when the cameras are gone, he was closed, mm -hmm. closed mouth, like couldn't talk. It was done. Like he was, he was back to lockdown. Kind of how warped that is, right? The little girls are over here sitting here crying and upset and Josh is coming back and he's kind of like the celebrity to the church because the elders in the church are like, You've, you've beat the devil. You've beat the devil. You are working on it. Like you're going to stand in God's truth and they're building Josh up while the girls are over here. Just kind of like you need to forgive and forget and move on and have faith and throw it into the sea of forgetfulness and just, you know, I don't know you guys. It just is crazy when you look at it from that perspective. Now let's talk about this state trooper, this state trooper, Joseph Hutchinson, is in prison right now for 56 years. Take a wild guess what he's in prison for. Go ahead. I'll wait. He was sentenced to prison and found guilty in 2007 for 20 counts of distributing, downloading, possessing, and viewing child SA images abuse, those type of abuse images. Thing about him though, was in 2005, he was arrested for it. So when he was sentenced to 56 years in 2007, he was a repeat offender. In 2005, they busted him for the same thing and distributing them too. The guy, Justin, who was friends with Josh at one point and spoke out about this, said that he really struggled a lot when he was younger about looking at images too. He said that he remembered one time he had like a Sears catalog or something. You guys remember those whenever we were younger? I think they still have Sears catalogs now, but back then there was no internet. So like you could see girls like modeling bikinis because it was a Sears catalog. And like Justin would look at them and like he would feel feelings. And then he would like kind of beat himself up about it. And you know, this is wrong. This is lustful. This is sinful. Da, 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 da. And he would always hear that if you look at those types of things, it's going to develop into prano, that type of thing. And so he really wrestled with this bad as a young boy and a young curious boy with probably, I don't know, not a lot of people to talk to about that or about real feelings, real chemical reactions that people have when they see certain things, right? And so as he got older, he wanted to talk to Josh about some desires that he was having because he knew from when he was younger that Josh had an issue with looking at certain images. Well, he thought that's all it was because that's all the church told him. So Justin said he went to the car lot where Josh was. He said he spent like hours there with Josh. He said he made Josh lunch and they talked and he confessed, you know, his desire. And Josh was telling him about how to download the certain thing on his, you know, computer that would stop him from looking at the, those images. The thing that Josh had on his computer that stopped him from looking at the images, whatever. 
Justin said he felt he is the person he could trust. And he said, then he confessed to Josh, like this traumatic incident that happened to him when he was uh, younger and the adult that did it to him. He didn't say what the traumatic incident was, but he said it was, it was traumatizing to him. Josh listened to him. He said he finished, he left and he felt like, wow, like I could, I could get it off my chest. You know, I could talk to him. He said, not long after that, he said that Josh called the person that violated him or traumatized him or whatever and in whatever way and told him. So Josh, like a slithery snake, this is what I see when I, when I think about Josh Duggar. When this guy, this guy comes there and trusts him and talks to him and confesses to him like, oh, this is what really hurt me and this person did this to me. Josh, get, when he leaves, he calls him up. Guess what Justin told me? Really? Like a little... Mm. So Justin said, he asked Josh, like, why would you do that? Why would you tell him that? And Josh was like, well, you needed to tell him anyways. I don't know, you guys. The more that I hear about this dude, and there's so much more. There's actually two more episodes of this podcast that has been released. I haven't had the time to listen to him yet, but I am going to listen to him because I like hearing his perspective. Seems like a very, very, very nice guy. His wife seems very nice, and they're just talking. They're just talking about it. And I'm going to wrap this up with this final thought. You know... Whenever I got out of prison, a lot of you guys know that I was sentenced to three years in prison. <clears throat> and whenever I got out, I went to a faith-based women's home in South Florida. Me and my best friend, Alex, went there. We had both gotten out of prison and we both went to the same place at different times because we got out different times. We both went there. And we didn't have any type of people in our life that were godly like that until we got to this faith-based like women's shelter, homeless shelter, whatever you want to call it. And the teachings of this place, and I don't ever want to say anything bad about this place because I, I am so thankful for it. Although I don't agree with everything that they did and everything that happened, I would not change my experience there for the world, and I'm so thankful. However, there they ran things, what seems like very similar to the way that Duggars, the Duggars run their lives, their family, and their church. If you had any anxiety... If you had any worry, if you had anything like that, it was because you didn't have enough faith. And that really messed me up for a while. It was very, very, very hard because like I'm literally getting out of prison and you guys know my history and my past and everything. And that alone is a lot to take on. But any kind, you couldn't, and when we lived there, it you almost felt like you could not speak up about any kind of fear or worry or anything you had because that just meant that you were not a good enough Christian. And it, it was very, very difficult. And so it seems that that is the way that the Duggars run their life too. And a lot of you guys probably run your life like that as well. You know, you beat yourself up and you say, oh, I don't have enough faith. Oh, I don't have enough this and that. And faith is very important. And faith is what gets me through life. But we also live in real human bodies in a tangible world, okay? And our bodies have literal scientific reactions to certain things. I wonder what would have happened if Josh, when he was younger, was in an environment that he could come to his father and speak about feelings that he was having. I wonder what would have happened if the Duggar girls were in an environment that their feelings were validated and they were given all the tools that they needed to deal with what happened to them. Not saying that they didn't, but what it seems like is that it was probably a situation where it was like, you need to forgive and forget. You need to move on. The devil was attacking your brother. He's got important things to do in this world and he's going to beat the devil, you know? And, um, man, I just, I can't imagine how devastating that is to just really everybody. So I'm going to keep up with the story. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. You guys go and check out that podcast. Thank y'all for sending it to me. For those of you guys that sent it to me and thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, my loves, please do not forget to like it. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. We are, we are dreaming in the dark We are nothing more than dust